Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Gervaitis, an OBGYN in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada. Welcome to another video regarding intrauterine contraception. In today's video, I'm going to focus on the breastfeeding population, and we will be discussing options for contraception in women who are currently breastfeeding. The first issue that I'd like to address is hormonal contraception as it pertains to breastfeeding. Uh, now, uh, it's true that some hormones may decrease the breast milk production and that we might want to avoid those hormones uh, or those options in women who are breastfeeding. The main hormone that interferes with breast milk production is estrogen. So estrogen is contained in most combined birth control pills. And so in a breastfeeding woman, I would want to avoid most of the quotes regular or estrogen plus progesterone containing combined hormonal contraception uh, pills because of the concern that the estrogen component might decrease breast milk production. Progesterone does not decrease breast milk production. Uh, and for this reason, the progesterone only hormonal agents uh, are some of our first line options in breastfeeding patients. The levonorgestrel IUD, which levonorgestrel is a kind of progesterone, is absolutely approved for use in breastfeeding patients and has not been shown uh, to decrease breast milk production uh, in any sort of consistent or statistically significant fashion. So most of us as obstetrician gynecologists all feel 100% comfortable uh, in prescribing a levonorgestrel IUD for someone who is breastfeeding, whether it be Marina or Kylina as the two commonest uh, brands here in Canada. The copper IUD uh, is also an option in breastfeeding patients, um, but women might expect heavier or more painful periods uh, upon the return of menstruation. And so uh, for that reason, it doesn't tend to be one of our first line recommendations uh, because of those potentially negative menstrual bleeding side effects. In terms of other progesterone-only options, uh, there's Micronor, uh, which is the progesterone-only birth control pill. Uh, the tricky thing about Micronor is that for it to be effective, you have to take it right within the same two-hour window every single day. So unlike the regular birth control pill or the combined birth control pill, which is a little bit more flexible in terms of timing of the dose, so with the regular pill, if you normally take it in the morning and you forget and take it in the early afternoon, it's not as big a deal. But with Micronor, it is very uh, specifically in a two hour window, the same two hour window every day that you need to take the pill. No days off, no week off, no fake sugar pills. So for busy new moms, the idea of having to be committed to that uh, very narrow two hour time frame for taking a pill every day and remembering to take that pill every day, it can be a little bit daunting. And for that reason, the uh, failure rate on Micronor is much higher than uh, the 0.2% uh, failure rate of the uh, IUD. Depo Provera or the shot is also an option uh, that is progesterone only and is safe with breastfeeding. It involves an injection every three months. One of the downsides to Depo Provera, uh, in addition to some of the hormonal uh, side effects on bone density, uh, although these side effects usually are reversed with discontinuation um, of the Depo Provera. In a childbearing population and in a patient who may be considering another pregnancy in the near future, Depo Provera isn't the greatest option uh, because once you decide that you are done with contraception and want to start trying to conceive, when you uh, receive your last Depo Provera injection, it could be up to a year later before your body starts to ovulate again and pregnancy is possible. So with Depo Provera, there's a delay in return to ovulation. Compared to say the IUD, whether copper or levonorgestrel, easy to remove at any point in time prior to the five-year window, uh, although they're good for up to five years. But any time before that, if a patient is interested in trying to conceive, it can be removed 
uh, and uh, really essentially the next month that patient could be considered fertile. Another option for breastfeeding patients that I wanted to briefly uh, address is called the lactation amenorrheic method. Uh, basically, this refers to the fact that women who are breastfeeding and breastfeeding regularly don't usually have a period. That's what the amenorrhea means, uh, no menstrual cycle, uh, because they're not likely to ovulate. Now, in order to rely on this method alone as contraception, the patient needs to be breastfeeding consistently every four hours. Uh, so if you are breastfeeding every four hours, it is less likely for you to ovulate. However, I tend not to encourage patients to rely on this method alone um, because God forbid you should ever get to sleep for longer than four hours and miss a four hour feed. Um, and in reality, that is often the case that although you might usually be schedule, uh, have scheduled feeds that are at least every four hours, there might be that one time where you get a break for longer than that and uh, we wouldn't want to see that lead to an unplanned pregnancy. Um, so, but that's just a little bit of information about the lactational amenorrheic method. And I do warn my patients that even if you haven't had a cycle yet after delivery uh, while you're breastfeeding, does not mean that you haven't ovulated. You may have just ovulated and a period will be coming soon, but the bottom line is, is you can't rely just on your period history and a lack of periods to tell you that, oh, I'm in the clear, I haven't ovulated. So you have to still use protection. Some couples choose to use condoms uh, while breastfeeding. Um, I'll just remind patients that the real world um, contraceptive failure rate of condoms can be as high as 18%. So when a patient in my population uh, who is breastfeeding or not breastfeeding basically says that they're going to be using condoms for contraception, I generally warn them that if, uh, if they're using that method, that it's best to be of the mindset that if it happens, it happens. That is to say, if we happen to get pregnant while using condoms, it wouldn't be the end of the world. If that's the case, then that's absolutely fine. I also sometimes advise those couples to be using um, or to be taking prenatal vitamins um, just in case of an unplanned pregnancy and that way you already have been taking the appropriate uh, folic acid prior to conception. Um, but the bottom line is if you're relying on condoms alone, it's generally taking a little bit of a risk contraceptively speaking, because it has the uh, highest fail rate of all of the different contraceptive options. So that was uh, just a bit of information about uh, contraceptive options while breastfeeding. Again, I want to reassure my patients that I'm absolutely confident in prescribing uh, the levonorgestrel containing IUD for uh, breastfeeding patients. Uh, I have not in my patient population uh, seen any significant decrease or any decrease at all uh, in breast milk production. I just have not had that reported by my patients and the evidence would support that. Uh, I will comment that uh, the rate of uterine perforation, which is a potential complication of IUD insertion, it's very, very rare some studies have suggested that the chance of perforation might be slightly higher in postpartum breastfeeding patients. Other studies have not shown that consistently, uh, but again, I do discuss that potential uh, rare risk with all of my uh, breastfeeding postpartum patients, as well as all of my patients in general, that there is about a one in a thousand chance that the IUD could go through the uterus at the time of insertion or subsequently. If that were to happen, it would require a day surgery to retrieve the IUD. Again, it's very, very rare, but I mention it to my uh, patients uh, so that they understand the importance of coming to see me for the follow-up visit. Just to briefly speak about IUD insertion uh, postpartum, generally we wait until the six to eight week postpartum window. Some women may choose to have an IUD inserted 
almost immediately after uh, birth, after placental delivery uh, in hospital. Uh, that's sort of a separate conversation. But uh, speaking of postpartum uh, IUD insertion in the office, generally we would wait until at least six to eight weeks postpartum. For women who have had a vaginal delivery, this is one of the easiest times to insert an IUD because the cervix is still a little bit open uh, from having just had a delivery. Uh, so really the cramps tend to be quite minimal um, when we're inserting an IUD postpartum. I often have patients who I've, I've done the IUD insert, it's in and they're sort of still waiting for me to do something and they say, what do you mean you're done, that's it. So it might really be um, fairly minimal in terms of cramping, so that's something to, uh, to keep in mind as well. Those are some of the main topics that I wanted to cover with regards to postpartum contraception and specifically uh, contraception uh, in the uh, breastfeeding uh, postpartum patient. I'll just remind you that in less than the time it took for you to watch this video, you could have had an IUD inserted uh, because the whole process takes about five minutes and provides you with five years of worry-free contraception. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.